All right, so uh, we are, uh, this is where we left off. So um, in order to sculpt on this, we actually can't go into sculpting and start sculpting on it because it, we uh, we need to use a multi-resolution um, uh, thing and uh, and we need to sculpt on it. So uh, it, we actually have to combine this as one full unit. So that's what we're gonna do. So right now with the mirror here, uh, make sure you hit tab that you're in the object mode. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply so that it is indeed one piece. But we should have all of our parts at this point. So that looks fine. Um, make, you know, larger adjustments and such as that you need. Um, but now I'm going to go into the sculpting. So we're just going to click on the sculpting tab here. And before we start sculpting, we're just going to do uh, a bunch of settings um, just to make sure things are kind of set up correctly. So first off, make sure that you have this on up here, okay? So um, you can also do it down here underneath uh, where you symmetry, uh, as long as you're in the tool settings here. Um, but make sure you have symmetry on X, but the easiest way is actually just to do it there. And then you'll notice that if I sculpt on one side, it sculpts on the other, okay? Uh, it should be X, that should be your, your mirrored axis, but if for some reason you went the other direction, just you know do the corresponding um, correct one, okay? so. Oops, not X and Y, not X and Y, there we go. Uh, so make sure you do that, that looks fine. Uh, another thing we can do that you might find helpful is if you do not like the default gray here, you go up here, um, uh, just hit the little drop down, hit this little thing and you'll see there are different materials. Some of them are very fun, um, you know, like that's, that's cool, but they're not super useful. Generally speaking, I always tell people you wanna use whatever the ugliest material is because if it looks good with that material, then it will look good uh, in production. It, you know, this material might make it look good here, but it might not make it look otherwise. And also, um, you want to use, even more than that, you want to use one that reveals the model the best, where you can see. Uh, so you want some specular highlight, because that way you can see how the, the light's reflecting off of it. Uh, you want to be able to see, you know, highlights and shades, um, the, the full spectrum. Okay, so... Uh, Make sure you're doing that as well. Um, let me see. You might, uh, I don't think we're going to need this. Um, not this one. Uh, you might find it useful later on if you put on, where are you? Floor axis. Uh, oh, here we go. Geometry. Uh, you might want to uh, have the wireframe visible um, while you're doing sculpting sometimes. Uh, but I don't think that's actually going to be very useful for us right now. But in the future, you might find that useful. Um, the other things that we would want to do is to make sure that we also turn on, where are you? Front faces only underneath brush. Um, basically what's going to do is it's going to make sure that we can't sculpt through the figure. Uh, like if uh, it's not going to be really possible right here, but if you have like a really thin piece and you were to sculpt, it'll actually sculpt on the other side of it as you're sculpting on this side and it will push both the, 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 the part you're working on and the behind it forward. So um, also make sure you turn that on. Uh, let's see. I think, oh, okay, yeah. So we got those elements. Um, the way we're going to do this is there's basically two approaches to this, okay? So um, one approach is to use this dino topo and the remesh. Um, the other approach is just to sculpt what we already have. Now, if you use the dino topo, uh, it's basically like Dynamesh or a bunch of other ones. You just turn this on here and you will see that, and this is actually why I wanted to show you this before with the wireframe on, um, it will sculpt, um, it will dynamically create geometry as you need it. So hang on, I'm just going to make this a little more powerful. Um, it will sculpt and dynamically tessellate the model as you're sculpting, but obviously it results in poor geometry. So generally speaking, um, if you do this, you're going to have to retopologize the model. So that's probably not the best way to go, but that's what the, um, dino topo would allow you to do. Um, uh, there's also options underneath this, so you can choose the detail size. So just so you are aware, like if I make this smaller, right, it's going to result in tighter amounts of geometry. And if you make it larger, it's going to result in um, less, uh, more geometry. Oops, come on. Uh, and there's also, uh, let me see, refine method, so do I, oh, relative detail. So what that means is that, if, you see how big my brush is here? Let me undo this again. Um, uh, when I get closer, you see how it's this big? And if I get really far away, 
see how it's that big? It does it based on the size of the, um, the brush. If you change this to not relative detail, it'll always be the same amount of detail whether you zoom in or zoom out, okay? So anyway, that's one. The other thing here is this remesh. So uh, if you hit remesh, what it's gonna do is it's, it's uh, the same as um, uh, inside of uh, ZBrush. It's just going to basically try to, uh, in a quad way, remesh uh, the whole model. So as you're sculpting every now and then, you just hit remesh and it'll remesh it. So uh, you can choose which way you find more useful to you. Uh, but I'm not gonna do that here because we actually modeled this in a box model manner. So what we're gonna do instead is use a subdivision uh, method, okay? So to do that, um, what we're gonna do is you're actually gonna have to add a modifier and we wanna add the multi-resolution modifier. And so this will work more like if you were in like Mudbox and you subdivide the model and you're not dynamically tessellating the model. Although Mudbox does actually have that now, but uh, it's, it, it's not as well done as other versions like in um, ZBrush. So all you do is you hit subdivide and it will subdivide the model, subdivide, subdivide the model. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the wireframe back off because that's not particularly helpful. Um, another thing you might actually like too, if you do kind of want the wireframe, but not, you can always go and change, uh, turn on like cavity. And you can see it sort of gives you this, this uh, sort of wireframe, which is kind of soft. Um, but uh, that's probably not gonna be very particularly helpful for us right at the moment. So anyways, you will see that we are subdividing the model. And then from there, we can start um, our sculpting. Okay, so what are we at? All right, so we're okay for time. So um, when we are doing, oops, every time you subdivide, you can subdivide it. And if you wanna go back down, you go back down like this, okay? Now you're gonna see that there are three sections here. One for render, one for sculpt, and one for um, level in the viewport, all right? So the render one means that when we actually were to render this, it'll render it at this resolution. So you'll notice if I turn this down, it doesn't affect this. It's just during render time. So really just leave this one alone. You don't have to do anything with it. The viewport is for when we're in normal, just working, okay? Sculpting means while we're sculpting, which is what the mode we're in now. So for instance, if we go back to modeling, see how it looks like this? So this is the normal viewport. You'd have to up this and you actually have to be in object mode. Um, and you will then see the um, what it would look like in the viewport. So that's what the viewport stands for, okay? so. Uh, for the most part, too, I mean, you could turn this up to whatever this one is, but you really only have to worry about the um, the sculpt uh, section of this. Okay, so uh, if you need to go down levels, go down levels. If you need to go up levels, go up levels. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically what that is for. Um, what you want to do is start with a low level. So, you know, you go like level two, maybe make big, broad moves. And then, um, you know, subdivide and move up your subdivisions. Uh, but that's how we're going to do this because we already have um, a wireframe that, um, uh, oh, that's right. So we already have a wireframe uh, that already has the correct topology because we, we modeled this by hand. Okay. So uh, in the next one, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to show you roughly how to uh, sculpt on this um, in a better manner. Okay.